how to sell a home fast. This is one of the top search queries on Google for those starting to consider selling their home. While part of the reason to want to sell your home quickly is just so you can simply move on to the next chapter in your life. The not so secret secret is that getting your home show ready and having it that way 24 seven is basically like running a five star hotel for strangers who might judge your spice drawer. Exhausting, you bet. Overwhelming, totally. I get it. Getting and maintaining your home in pristine show ready condition is no small feat. The constant battle against clutter, the eternal quest for the perfect ambiance and the unforeseen hiccups can leave even the most resilient homeowners feeling a tad overwhelmed. But fear not, I've got you covered. Welcome to this comprehensive tutorial on getting your home ready to sell. I believe that a well-staged home is the secret sauce that makes your property stand out and more importantly, sell fast. Think of this guide as your personal superhero cape, shielding you from the chaos and transforming your home into a buyer wowing masterpiece. No more sprinting around like a caffeinated chihuahua every time the doorbell rings. Just imagine calmly sipping coffee instead of frantically stuffing socks under the sofa, smiling at potential buyers instead of hiding behind the shower curtain. We've all considered it. Scoring a top dollar offer that screams cha-ching, not oh no. In this video, I'm taking you on location to a listing of mine to give you valuable insights, room by room tips, and professional advice to simplify the process of preparing your home for the market. And scroll through the video to go through the chapters with each part of the home. And to help out even more, I have created a downloadable guide to help you refer back to as you are making your way through your home. In this guide, I separate out each room to give you an actionable checklist so that you can go room by room and print it out and mark it up as you make your way through. Just go to thehomestagingguide.com to get your copy. And you might be asking yourself, why do I even need a guide? Why is this so important anyway? Well, the reason staging is important when preparing your home to sell is because it hits on a lot of key factors that influence buyers. It's not just about creating picture perfect vignettes for your online listing photos. It is about unlocking the full potential of your property and making sure buyers see it. A well staged home captures the imagination of potential buyers, making them envision a future within your four walls. Picture this. Those buyers walk in and instantly can envision themselves curled up by that fireplace in that cozy living room. And they dream about hosting dinner parties in that sparkling kitchen and tucking their kids into those bedrooms. That is the magic of home staging. More than fluffy pillows and fancy candles, staging is a scientifically proven strategy to sell your home faster and for more money, according to a report by the National Association of Realtors. Staged homes typically spend 74% less time on the market compared to their non-staged home neighbors. Staging is an investment with a potentially high return. The International Association of Home Staging Professionals reports that the majority of real estate agents believe staging increases a home's value anywhere from 1% to 20%. According to a red study, homes with professional photos receive 118% more online views than homes with amateur photos. Staging helps buyers visualize the potential of a space. And the National Association of Realtors notes that 81% of buyers find it easy to visualize a property as their future home when it is staged. And beyond the data, buying a home is such an emotional purchase. Buyers want to feel like they are getting a great value for the money they're spending and they want to feel like a house has been well maintained. So there are no surprises once they own it. A well-staged home evokes a positive emotional connection. It's a trite phrase, but you only get one chance at making a great first impression. And the impact of home staging goes beyond mere decoration. It's a strategic move that directly influences the success of your home sale. So this guide is is a culmination of years of representing sellers and helping them through the home staging process. It leverages lessons learned from attending countless home staging consultations with accredited home stagers and after walking through thousands of homes with buyers and seeing a home through their eyes. What started as a way to serve my client base has morphed into a published guide that helps serve home sellers all over the nation. If you are starting the process of getting your home ready for the market, my team and I would love to be a resource to you. We serve clients all over the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, in addition to connecting soon-to-be sellers with some of the top realtors in the nation.
We are part of a national network of real estate agents where we can verify production and vet top performing agents to make sure you are working with a savvy professional in your metro. If you'd like for us to connect you with one of our trusted experienced agents, visit topagent.thehomestagingguide.com and let us know a little about you so we can connect you to a top agent local to you. So now let's go on location where we will start with staging the outside of your home. The exterior of your home serves as the prologue to your property story. It sets the stage, establishes the first impression, and can significantly influence buyer perception. In the competitive world of real estate, maximizing curb appeal is not just a luxury, it is a strategic investment. Studies by the National Association of Realtors highlight the undeniable impact of curb appeal on housing outcomes. Homes with well-maintained exteriors and attractive landscaping spend fewer days on the market compared to their unkempt counterparts. Moreover, properties with strong curb appeal often command higher asking prices and can open themselves up to receiving competitive offers in stronger markets. Investing in curb appeal is not about superficial prettiness. It's about presenting a picture of care and potential. A tidy lawn, vibrant landscaping, and a welcoming entryway convey a sense of pride in ownership and suggest a well-maintained interior. This in turn fosters trust and confidence in the minds of potential buyers, making them more receptive to the value and possibilities your property offers. So what should you do? Power wash away dirt, grime, and cobwebs from siding, sidewalks, and walkways. Refresh faded or chipped paint on the house, trim, and doors. Mow that grass sharp enough to give the neighbors lawn envy. Trim hedges, edges, and remove any pesky weeds. Trim bushes away from the house so an inspector does not ding you for having conditions conducive to wood destroying insects. Don't forget to rake the leaves. Nobody wants to waltz through autumnal confetti. Plant seasonal flowers in vibrant hues, but avoid anything too strong smelling. Add texture with shrubs and small trees. Remember, low maintenance options are your friends. Fresh mulch around flower beds and trees instantly adds polish and keeps weeds at bay. Choose dark brown or black mulch for that freshly updated look that will also help your greenery pop. Prune any overgrown branches that block windows, block the view from the street, or obstruct walkways. Aim for a well-maintained yet natural look. Bonus pro tips, clean windows, shiny panes, let in light and showcase the interior of the home. Don't forget the screens, dust bunnies cling to them and they're not cute. Clean up after your furry friends, keep toys and bowls hidden and neutralize any lingering odors. Remember, curb appeal is all about creating a positive first impression. By showcasing a clean and well-maintained and inviting exterior, prospective buyers will get the warm fuzzies about your home before they've even stepped inside. Before you showcase your property, take a critical look and tackle these vital exterior maintenance tasks. Roof and gutters. Look for missing or damaged shingles, loose or rusted flashing, and any signs of leaks or water damage. Clear gutters of leaves, debris, and blockages to prevent water damage and improve drainage. Check for cracks, chipping, warping, or signs of wood rot. Replace any rotted wood. Did you know that some loans, like government-backed loans, will not get approved if there is chipping paint or rotted wood on the home? To prevent this from being a hang-up in your sale, it is recommended that you go ahead and address these items and get them fixed before listing. Remember, addressing exterior maintenance concerns isn't just about aesthetics. It's about demonstrating the overall quality and longevity of your home. By tackling these important tasks, you will not only attract more buyers, but also potentially command a higher selling price. Another bonus tip, consider enlisting the help of a professional home inspector. Their findings can help you prioritize needed repairs and address any hidden issues before they become deal breakers for potential buyers. And be sure to remember your backyard. You'll wanna clean up your back porch or patio, and if you're able to add seating, go ahead and do it. Remove any evidence of pets, and make sure to clean up any pet waste in the backyard before showings, since a serious buyer will often walk around the home and through the yard. For our printable checklist to help guide you through the steps of prepping the exterior of your home for the market, go to thehomestagingguide.com to get your copy. Now, once you get the outside of your home fixed up, it is time to move inside to the first thing that buyers see when they walk in, your entryway. Think of your home's entryway as the opening act in a play. It sets the tone for the entire production. In the case of selling your home, a captivating first impression upon entry can lure buyers deeper into the story, leaving them yearning for more. 
Your entryway should be warm, inviting, and memorable. Banish clutter. Shoes stacked by the door, coats on hooks, and stray papers convey chaos. Pack away personal items and create a sense of spaciousness that invites exploration. Hang a statement mirror to visually expand the space and bounce light, making the entryway feel larger and brighter. When you can, opt for clean lines and neutral frames for a timeless touch. Overhead lighting is essential, but consider adding lamps or sconces for a warm ambiance and highlighting key features. Greet feet with a stylish welcome mat. Choose something functional and avoid overly large mats with busy patterns that may block the doorway and stop the eye. If space allows, consider a small bench or chair for buyers to slip off their shoes or to encourage lingering. Opt for something stylish and neutral that complements the overall decor of the home. Avoid overwhelming the space with too many decorations. A few well-chosen pieces like a sculptural vase, a framed print, or a bowl of fresh fruit add personality without clutter. And like in this home, many times you can work with what you already have. This homeowner already had this beautiful mirror here that fit well in this space. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And if you simply declutter, that can go a very long way and not cost you a dime. Keep in mind, at a showing, you will have the agent, the couple buying the home, or maybe a parent or child accompanying the prospective buyers. That is a lot of people in the entryway at one time. You want it to be open and easy to navigate to the rest of the house quickly. This prevents the space from feeling tight and cramped. Now, depending on the layout of your home, the living room is often the next space a buyer walks into. This and the kitchen are widely considered the heart of the home. It's the stage for laughter, for gatherings and cozy evenings in. In home staging, it's where dreams take flight, where potential buyers imagine themselves unwinding, entertaining, and building memories. But before they can picture their lives on your couch, there is a crucial step you gotta complete, and it's depersonalization. Think of it like clearing the stage for a captivating performance. Your personal photos, quirky collections, and overflowing bookshelves hold immense sentiment of value, but in the world of selling, they can become roadblocks. They remind buyers of your story, making it harder for them to envision theirs. You'll want to shift your thinking and understand that depersonalization isn't about erasing your personality. It's about creating a blank canvas. By minimizing personal items, you open the door for buyers to paint their own picture. They see the clean lines of the sofa, the inviting glow of the fireplace, and the potential for movie nights and family gatherings. Their imaginations take flight, weaving stories of laughter and joy within the walls you're selling. But depersonalization doesn't mean boring. Here's how to strike the perfect balance. Pack away the personal treasures like family photos, souvenirs, and collections. They're going to get packed up anyway, so why not go ahead and start now? Leave just a few carefully chosen pieces that add warmth without overwhelming the space. Neutralize the palette. Bold colors might be your jam, but for buyers, they can be a hurdle. Consider a fresh coat of light airy neutrals like whites, beiges, or light grays to expand the space and allow buyers to envision their own color palette. Remove excess furniture and decorative pieces. Aim for a clean, uncluttered flow that showcases the room's potential without feeling cramped. Stage for comfort and function. Arrange furniture to encourage conversation and flow. Create cozy seating areas around the fireplace or coffee table. Designate conversational seating around the coffee table, arranging sofas and armchairs face-to-face -face when possible. Leave enough space for easy movement without bumping furniture. And don't push furniture against the walls. Give your living room center stage. Define seating areas with rugs or strategically placed side tables. Let the fireplace bask in its rightful glory, unobstructed by furniture barriers. Remember, negative space is your friend. Accessorize thoughtfully. A throw blanket on the couch whispers comfort. A low vase of fresh flowers sings a vibrancy. Avoid cluttering. Remember, often less is more. And have no more than three decorative items on any given surface. Now, coffee tables, TV stands, and side tables can become a magnet for clutter. See what we did here, where we took books from the owner's cookbook collection and made a simple, 
clean and cohesive look on the TV stand so it wasn't empty, but also had a little bit of interest. Think of ways to reuse things you already have. These cookbooks were in another room starting out, and these cubbies were crowded with a lot of random decor. We had the owner pack away the collection, and we were able to perfectly stage the space to keep it simple so the eye keeps moving through the room, but not leaving it empty and boring. On the coffee table, we had the owner remove pretty much everything from the top and bottom of the table. We wanted minimal items on the table because we wanted to do everything to keep the eye going to the back of the house to these gorgeous windows that let in so much natural light. And while I believe it is very important to wash all the windows regardless of where they are, it is critically important when they are center stage in a room like this. Now, if you have a ladder and a telescoping mop, you can get some of your taller windows. You will want to wash the inside and outside of the windows and be sure to clean those screens too. These are small details to pay attention to, but help tell an overall story of good home care to a prospective buyer. And if you happen to have curtains, this is the time where less is more. First of all, for pictures and showings, you want your windows to be open and let in as much natural light as they can. If you have something unsightly on the other side of your windows, then tilt the blinds up a little bit so the light comes through, but slightly obscures the distractions outside. Now, if you have pattern heavy curtains, consider removing them or replacing them with shears or neutral curtains. Anything with a pattern is case specific and can be distracting to a buyer. So we did have the owners purchase some pillows for the couch to elevate the cozy level in the room. They started with some small gray pillows that we actually moved to the guest bedroom and they have these accent pillows right here. So we selected some giant neutral pillows to elevate the space and now the owners have something to keep and take with them to their new home. Make sure that nothing sticks up in the middle of the room above the height of the sofa, like a large vase on a sofa table or a floor lamp. When placed in the middle of the room, tall pieces stop the eye and prevent it from seeing the true depth of the space. Move taller objects to the side or remove them entirely from the space. So when you walk into the room, your eye is drawn to the furthest corner. Now, I really like the idea of having plant life in a room when possible. The owner already had these plants and actually had a few more, so we reduced the number in the room but left a few for visual interest and to give the feeling of life in the room. We also moved one plant into the home office just to liven that space up a little bit. And I will caution you against fake plants. They feel fake and forced, so just forget them entirely. Plants like fiddly figs and peace lilies are easy to care for and give a great impression with little effort. And remember to clean this space well. Dust everything, especially the blinds and the ceiling fan. Make sure lights work and the bolts are all at the same intensity. When the living room feels fresh and well-maintained, it serves as a positive reflection of the way the rest of the house must have been cared for. Now for the kitchen. Buyers envision themselves whipping up feasts and hosting joyous gatherings in your kitchen. However, overflowing cabinets, mountains of appliances, and culinary clutter can only whisper chaos. Decluttering and organizing are the secret ingredients that transform the ordinary into the extraordinary when it comes to the kitchen. Clear countertop surfaces, so toaster ovens, coffee makers, and blenders can take a vacation. Let the gleaming expanse of the countertops sing the praises of the spaciousness of your kitchen, unless this is one of your three allowed decorative elements. More on that later. So tame messy shelves, organize spices alphabetically, and group items by function. If your cabinets are cluttered and overflowing, buyers will assume there won't be room for any of their stuff either. Aim for cabinets and the pantry to be at no more than 70% full. Use organizers and dividers to transform cabinet chaos into order. Remember the pantry. You will want to make sure that your pantry is organized and try not to have anything on the ground. A streamlined space whispers efficiency, inviting buyers to imagine themselves whipping up those gourmet feasts with ease and with room to spare. A clean kitchen is an immediate reflection of the overall cleanliness and maintenance of the home. When buyers step into a sparkling kitchen, they're greeted by a sense of order, care, and attention to detail. And a clean kitchen isn't just about appearance, it also influences the atmosphere of the entire home. 
The smell of cleanliness is inviting and can enhance the overall impression of your property. Unpleasant odors or visual distractions from a messy kitchen can be major turnoffs for potential buyers. Now, right before a showing, it is helpful to do a quick spray of the counters to wipe them down and get a fresh scent in the air. I like using this method granite cleaner because the scent is nice and light and you get clean counters at the same time. A clean kitchen sends a powerful message to buyers. It communicates that the home has been well cared for. This creates a sense of trust and confidence in the home, reassuring buyers that they're making a sound investment. It eliminates doubts about hidden issues or possible neglect of the home. Now for some notes on your appliances. Working appliances convey a sense of reliability and functionality. Buyers want assurance that the heart of the home is ready to serve them seamlessly. Appliances in good working order eliminate doubts and instill confidence in the prospective buyer. Buyers are more likely to trust that the entire home has been well maintained when they see that appliances are in good working order. And trust is a fundamental factor in real estate transactions. And functional appliances contribute to a positive perception of your property. So be sure your appliances work and give them a deep clean. Easy off did wonders on this oven door. I promise. I saw it before. And a bit of a cleaning hack. This window cleaning cloth with a little bit of water helps remove spots and smudges from everything like the microwave door or the sink faucet. And if you need to clean your stainless steel, this stainless steel cleaner by Method has always been my go-to. If you have a breakfast area in your kitchen with a table, be sure to keep it clean and decorate it with a simple bowl of fresh fruit. I find that apples last the longest and you can mix up the colors for a fun centerpiece. And that's actually another little hack I have. Instead of using fresh flowers and staging that start to die in a few days, displaying fresh fruit, not fake fruit, is a great way to add life in a room like a kitchen or a dining room. Finally, make sure that you touch up any scuffs on the walls and paint in your kitchen or breakfast area, especially around the table and chairs. They often get bumped into and get pretty marked up along the way. And of course, always make sure your light fixtures are well dusted and that all of your light bulbs are working and of the same intensity. Oh, and if you have mats or rugs in the kitchen, go ahead and pack those up. They're actually gonna break up the space and make the kitchen feel smaller, and they can also be a tripping hazard. So go ahead and get rid of them. The dining room serves as a functional area for meals and for the enchanting backdrop for delightful gatherings and lasting impressions. Whether it's an intimate dinner for two or a festive feast for friends, the dining room sets the stage for culinary adventures and communal joy. So why does staging a dining room matter? Well, again, it's not just about arranging the chairs around a table, it's about curating an atmosphere where every meal feels like a celebration and every gathering becomes a cherished memory. Staging the dining room can be as simple as minimizing any personal items and keeping it as simple as presenting a clean table and chairs and an understated centerpiece. Be sure that you don't crowd the room with furniture that people can't move around the entire space and make sure that no arrangement or furniture is so tall that it blocks a window. Now there's a general rule of three feet in design. And what that means is that you wanna to aim to have at least three feet of space between different elements. So you don't crowd a room, but also give you plenty of space to pass through. In a dining room, it's very easy to get furniture happy. A lot of people have family heirlooms and large dining sets with oversized chairs and display hutches. And if you have a display hutch, Organize the dishes so that what you see through the glass isn't crowded or messy. Now, what do you do if your dining room is not being used as a dining room? Well, this is one of those times where home sellers really don't like me all that much because this is the part of the consultation where I tell them that it is time to turn the room back to its originally intended use. So if it's a dining room, you wanna try and stage it so that it looks like a dining room. In fact, that's what these homeowners did. They used the breakfast area as their dining room and this room had a completely different purpose. However, it was best to stage it back to a dining room since the chandelier was here and it was the first room people saw as they walked into the door. So we actually had the sellers take the kitchen breakfast table and put it here. And then we actually took the rug that was in the office and put it under the table to help frame the space. And by now you've heard about my fresh apples trick. So we added those here to put some life into this room. And you probably have this committed to memory by now. 
but just as with all the other spaces, if you have bold colors or bold curtains in this room, it's best to repaint a neutral color and remove any pattern heavy or dark curtains. Clean the windows, blinds, and light fixtures and baseboards. And if you can, touch up any separation cracks if you happen to have crown molding in the room. Touch up any scuffs in the wall that may have come from moving chairs. Bedrooms are personal retreats of rest and intimate spaces where dreams take flight. When staging your home for sale, neutralizing and depersonalizing bedrooms is crucial for two key reasons. One, it attracts a wider range of buyers and it allows them to envision themselves in the space. Neutralizing and depersonalizing removes personal associations. Potential buyers have their own unique tastes and preferences. Having personal decor, photos, and collections in a bedroom can alienate a significant portion of the market who just can't seem to picture themselves in the space. By removing these elements, you create a blank canvas, allowing buyers to see the room's potential for their own belongings and memories. Proper staging increases perceived size. Overcrowded shelves, cluttered surfaces, and bold wall colors can make the bedroom feel small and cramped. Neutralizing the space with light colors and minimal decor creates a sense of space, appealing to buyers looking for a larger feeling room. A neutral bedroom allows buyers to envision different uses of a space. Can it be a nursery, a home office, a guest room? The possibilities become endless, making the property more attractive to a diverse range of buyers. In bedrooms, you will follow the same rules as you have for the rest of the house in the sense of choosing a neutral wall color and toning down any vibrant or pattern-heavy selections like curtains or bed covers. Make sure all your light bulbs work and are at the same intensity. And clean those spaces from floor to ceiling. Seriously, dust the ceiling fan, wipe down baseboards, and of course, vacuum the floors. And opt for a plain white bed cover when you can, like what was done here. And in a room this large, you could even add more large and neutral pillows to this bed to increase the cozy factor in this room. Side tables should be free and clear of all personal effects. And that rule of three applies here too. And remember, that's my rule that says that you cannot have more than three things on any given surface. So here in the bedroom, you could have a lamp, a book, and a clock. Anything else goes in the drawer or packed away. Another often forgotten detail is that the bedroom should not have any personal items in sight, like medications or things like a CPAP machine. I've even seen mouth guards left out. Y'all, that is gross. Put it away. Put away any extra fans or air purifiers. I know you probably use them for white noise to sleep, but it tells a buyer that the room does not have sufficient airflow. And if you have a seating area, use a throw or a cozy pillow to add some interest to the space. When figuring out furniture, do your best to not stop the line of sight. And you want it to go to the furthest point in the room. The farther back the eye naturally goes, the larger the room will feel. So if a dresser or a bed blocks the door, it'll make the room feel a lot smaller. Take this guest bedroom, for instance. The lamp and side table were put on the opposite end of the room. Now, if you remember your middle school geometry, the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angled triangle, which tells you that the technical furthest point in this room is that corner over there. Therefore, we wanted our focus to go all the way back there since it's kind of a small room. So that is the best placement for these elements. So again, here we were able to take something the seller already had and just reposition it to stage the room and the space more effectively. Now for the closets. You'll want to declutter and organize closets to showcase the storage space they have. Even if you are bursting at the seams, you don't want a seller to know that you've run out of room. So go ahead and pack up your out of season clothes. Sort the clothes in your closet by tops and bottoms, and then go even further by sorting by lengths of the sleeves. Aim to have your closet filled at no more than 70% capacity, so it looks like you have room to grow. Try to make sure that you don't have anything on the floor. And if your closet is half empty, spread your clothes out so it takes up the entire space, but again, leave gaps so it looks like more can be added. Organize items on your closet shelves and store clutter in decorative storage boxes. Create some sort of order in this space. Why? Well, order and attention to detail in the small things, like a closet, sends a subconscious signal to the buyer that you're meticulous and take very good care of your things, like your house. And what do you do with your kids' toys? Well, hide them as best you can in storage boxes.
Immaculate cleanliness immediately communicates a sense of care and maintenance, setting a positive tone for the rest of the home. A clean, well-maintained bathroom tells a buyer that it has been meticulously cared for, while a neglected one can leave a lingering sense of doubt and even disgust. A well-staged bathroom allows buyers to envision the space as a sanctuary for relaxation. Neatly folded towels and stylish accessories and a cohesive color scheme contribute to an inviting and visually appealing atmosphere. Functionality is key here, and staging your bathroom showcases the practical aspects of the space. Properly functioning faucets, showers, and ventilation systems convey that the home has been well-maintained. Unpleasant odors can be a major turnoff. Invest in subtle air fresheners or natural scents to ensure a fresh and inviting atmosphere. A pleasant aroma contributes to the overall positive experience. And the key word here is subtle. Strong scents will turn people off right away. Some people have sensitivities to artificial scents or on the flip side will just assume something must be wrong that you have to cover it up with such a strong smell. My pre-showing trick is to take a scented air spray. Spray a little in the toilet bowl and then flush the toilet. It gives a light hint of scent in the air. You can also put out diffusers instead of plug-ins for lighter scents. Now, grime, mold, and lingering odors are deal breakers for a lot of buyers when it comes to the bathroom. Deep cleaning of every surface from the tub, toilet, and tile and grout are non-negotiables and make sure those light fixtures are clean too. Sparkling cleanliness tells a buyer that you have done a lot to maintain your home and speaks to the overall condition. Crisp, clean towels folded neatly on a rack or a shelf add a touch of luxury and show buyers that you care about the details. Opt for neutral colors that complement the overall decor. Depersonalizing the bathroom is critical. Remove toiletries, medications, and personal items. Pack them away to create a spacious, uncluttered feel. Store shower items in a bathroom caddy that can be easily hidden under the sink for showings. Another to-do for showings is to make sure to remove your bath mat. They break up the space and make the floor seem smaller, and again, they can also be a tripping hazard. Be sure to organize and declutter your drawers and cabinets. Remember the 70% capacity rule here too, and that is that any storage space should only be at 70% capacity, so it looks like you have plenty of space to grow. So cabinets and drawers should open and close easily without stuff falling out. Now, wiping your shower door and faucet after showering with a microfiber glass cleaning cloth like this will help reduce water spots substantially. Now, for this room over here, hide the plunger, toilet cleaner, and anything else that would indicate that the toilet is actually ever used. I mean, seriously, we know that it's there, but we actually don't want to be reminded what it's there for. So all that's allowed around the toilet is toilet paper. That's it. Hard stop. Just toilet paper. And be sure to close the toilet lid for pictures and showings. The home office is not just a workspace. It's a command center that reflects productivity, organization, and focus. As you prepare to sell your home, decluttering the office becomes a key component in creating an environment that resonates with potential buyers. Here is why the art of decluttering holds significant importance in the world of real estate. A cluttered home office can be visually overwhelming and create a negative first impression. Clearing excess items allows potential buyers to see the true potential and functionality of the space. Buyers can better envision how they might use the space for their own work or personal need. Buyers appreciate seeing a workspace where they can imagine themselves seamlessly managing tasks without the distraction of unnecessary items. Removing personal items and excessive decor neutralizes the home office, and this depersonalization allows potential buyers to envision the space as a versatile room that can adapt to their own professional or personal requirements. In addition, personal items can contain sensitive information, so paperwork and bills should be stored away safely so your personal information is not exposed to potential buyers. A tidy environment has a positive psychological impact. It conveys a sense of order and care, contributing to an overall positive perception of the home. While it may be the space where you store tools, bikes, and the occasional forgotten treasures, the garage is not exempt from the impact of staging when selling your home. Transforming your garage into an organized and appealing space holds significant importance in the eyes of potential buyers. A staged garage gives the impression of ample storage space, 
neatly organized items, and well-used storage solutions that help buyers envision the potential for storing their belongings efficiently. A well-maintained and organized garage communicates to potential buyers that the entire property has been well cared for. It eliminates concerns about hidden issues and fosters confidence in the home's overall condition. If you need extra storage space because you've been decluttering on the inside of the home, you can store boxes stacked neatly and in the furthest corner of the garage, though a portable storage unit like a pod is preferred. Now let's go over some of the general rules of staging and frequently asked questions. And you've heard a lot of these throughout this video, but it wouldn't hurt to cover them again and have them in one consolidated list. So first, let's start with the general staging rules. Neutral is key. If you have bold selections, tone them down. Heavily patterned curtains should be replaced with shears or neutral colored curtains. Old wall colors should be repainted with a neutral color. Clean everything. This is a free aspect of home staging, but can require a lot of elbow grease. From the floor to the ceiling, baseboards to fans, clean and dust everything and touch up paint where it's damaged. Then there's the rule of three, meaning no more than three items on any given surface. Another tip that's free. Then there's also the three feet rule, meaning that you wanna to try to have at least three feet of space for comfortable walkways. And remember the 70% capacity rule, which means that any storage space, so closet, cabinet, drawer, should only be at 70% capacity. So there is room for a buyer to visualize adding more things and try to keep things off the floor from closets. Hide evidence of pets. If you have a pet, put all pet accoutrements away. The food, the water bowl, the pet beds, crates, toys, clean up any waste from the backyard. And open blinds and curtains to let in all the natural light for showings and pictures. Turn on every light in the home, lamps included, and do this for photos and showings. And remember that light under the microwave works too. Remove personal accents throughout the home. Limit scents to lightly scented diffusers, no plugins. Use bowls of fresh fruit and planted greens for life-giving accents since flowers die off quickly and never ever use fake plants, flowers, or fruit. Remove all bath mats and area rugs. Play some ambiance setting music during showings. My favorite stations to recommend on Spotify are Peaceful Piano, Soft Jazz Guitar, Chilled Classical, or Calming Instrumental Covers. And most importantly, do what you can. If you can't hit every single item on this list, don't beat yourself up. Staging a home takes a lot of work and effort, and sometimes you don't have the luxury of time to get it all done. If all you can do is thoroughly clean your house and declutter, that is a huge leap forward. Remember that I have a handy guide waiting for you with room-by-room -room printouts that will help remind you of how to get your home ready for the market. Just go to thehomestagingguide.com to get your copy and you can start staging to your heart's content. But before I end this video, I do want to hit some frequently asked questions when it comes to staging your home to sell. Should you replace something or give a seller credit? Offering a home with replaced items reduces the need for negotiation around credits. Buyers may be more inclined to make higher offers when they see the value-added features already in place. Replacing items can address potential concerns that might arise during the inspection process, it minimizes the chances of negotiations based on issues discovered during the inspection. While offering a credit may seem like a simple solution, replacing items in a house demonstrates a commitment to maintaining and enhancing the property's value. It can lead to a smoother transaction process and a more satisfying outcome for both parties involved. And sometimes a credit is all you can offer. We all know money doesn't grow on trees and you may not have the funds available to repair some of the things you know need to get done. Be aware of these things going into a negotiation so you're not caught off guard when the repair request comes in. What is the difference between staging and decorating? The primary goal of interior decorating is to personalize and beautify a space based on the preferences and lifestyle of the homeowner. It involves selecting furnishings, colors, and decor that align with the homeowner's taste and needs. Staging, on the other hand, is focused on presenting a property in a way that appeals to potential buyers. The aim is to highlight the home's features, create a neutral and inviting environment, and facilitate a quicker and more lucrative sale. Staging focuses on neutralization. Personal items are minimized and the decor is kept natural to ensure that the home appeals to a broad range of potential buyers. Can I just store everything in the garage? 
Well, if that's the only option, I'll give you a reluctant yes. But that is not the preference because as I told you a few minutes ago, garages need staging too. If you're going to store the stuff in the garage, organize things in boxes and neatly stack them away in the furthest corner of the garage. And make sure that you're not blocking any critical component of the house like attic access, electrical panel, or the sprinkler box. Ideally, I recommend renting one of those portable storage units where if they drop it off in your driveway and all you do is load it up, they come and pick it up for you and take it away until you need it again. What if I can't do everything you recommend? Well, you would not be the first person. This video and the guide you'll find at thehomestagingguide.com are full of tips and ideas to stage your home that it would take you a very long time to get them all done. And if you can do it, great. It will help you in the sale of your home. But please don't beat yourself up if you can't do everything. My top three recommendations. If you can only do three things, do a deep clean of every surface of your house and every room. Ceiling fans, blinds, windows, baseboards, light fixtures, all the places you don't think about cleaning on a frequent basis. Well, clean all of that. And you can even pay someone to do this for you. Now, the second recommendation is to declutter and start packing things away. This way you'll hit that 70% capacity goal and you're gonna pack stuff away anyway, so why not go ahead and get started? But taking personal items off surfaces, cleaning out closets and cabinets and drawers, this costs you no money and it makes a world of difference to buyers. Then the third and final most important thing you can do is open up your curtains and blinds. Bring in as much natural light into the space as you can and supplement with artificial lights if necessary. Make sure that every light bulb in the house works and make sure they're all matching in intensity. Like the vanity lights over the sink, they should all be the same type of light bulb. How long does it take to prepare a home for the market? Well, it depends on how many things you're gonna do. If you're gonna paint, replace carpet and such, well, these things are gonna take a few weeks on top of the few weeks you're probably gonna need to do all the other things like decluttering and organizing things. I like to give my clients two to four weeks of prepping the home before we schedule pictures. How much does it cost to stage a home? Well, if you do the three minimal things, it costs you cleaning supplies and light bulbs. From there, the cost increases. This homeowner in this home spent around $500 on bedding, pillows, some touch-up paint, and miscellaneous decor. If you replace the carpet and repaint a home, depending on the size of the house, you're probably looking at something closer to $10,000 or $15,000. Where can I go to find staging decor? I have a resource guide with Amazon links to items at thehomestagingguide.com. Here you can find neutral but interesting decor items and these are things that can all get delivered straight to your door. Also, touring new construction homes is a great way to get ideas on how to lay out furniture and design the inside of the house to suit a wide range of tastes. Oh, and one final thing, what should you do on the day of a showing? You know, you get that call and an agent is gonna come by in about two hours with the buyers. Well, what do you do? Now, I do have this as a printable on thehomestagingguide.com. Of course, I'm gonna plug that again, but here's a quick list. Clear countertops and do a quick spray of cleaner with that light scent that I talked about. Spray that scented room spray in the toilets and flush them. Then close the toilet lid. Make all the beds. Put all the toys away. And remember, decorative storage bins are your friend. Hide any evidence of pets. And for the love of Fido, please do not leave your dogs in the house. Some people are definitely afraid of dogs. And then also, a lot of times, dogs just keep barking the entire time. And buyers just cannot wait to get out of the house because they're sick of hearing the dog bark. And then sometimes the buyers just want to play with the dog and they forget to look at the house. So take Fido with you and hide the trash cans. Move them out to the garage if needed. Put away bath mats and area rugs. Hide shower stuff. Turn on some peaceful light music. Then leave. Yeah, don't linger for showings. If you're sitting in your car outside of the house, that makes buyers feel really uncomfortable and it rushes them through the home. And if you stay in the house for showings, well, that's even worse. It is so awkward for a buyer to walk a home with a seller hanging around. If it can be avoided, please leave. All right, and those are your staging tips on how to sell a home fast. What do you think? Did I leave anything out? let me know in the comments. And for the last time, I will remind you to go to thehomestagingguide.com to get your copy of the complete guide to home staging. It is over 40 pages of content to inspire you 
with step-by-step -step checklists that go room by room so you know how to get your home ready for the market. And if we have not met yet, I'm Jennifer Shannon. I'm a realtor and broker associate with Keller Williams, and I have had my license since 2006. I have seen a lot of houses over the years and have learned a lot of lessons about what it takes to get homes sold. If you're considering selling your home, let's talk. I'd love to interview with you to earn your business. And if you happen to have a home outside of the area where I sell, I can help you with that too. I am part of a national network of real estate agents where I can verify production and vet top performing agents to make sure that you are working with a savvy professional wherever you live. Just go to topagent.thehomestagingguide.com, tell us the location of the home that you're looking to sell, and we will get you connected. Otherwise, you can always reach out to my team and I directly by phone or text to 214-803-4444 or by email to jshannon at kw.com. Well, that is all I have for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more helpful real estate tips. I have a bunch of videos planned to help you if you are thinking of selling your home this spring. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can be notified when I post a new video. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.